Barry. This is Martha Campbell. We welcome you to Barry Campbell Gallery. Um, we are, uh, we started five years ago. We worked for a big gallery in Midtown Manhattan. And our boss, we worked for the man for many years. And our boss retired. We said, what are we going to do? How are we going to carry on? We worked with all these great artists and estates. And we decided to open a gallery in Chelsea, which is pretty scary and risky. And it's been the best experience of my life, and I'm sure my goodness it has. Um, and we've had the great opportunity to work with artists like Eric Dever. Um, one of the great things for us, when we started the gallery, imagine this, we had no artists on our roster. So you know what we did? We called up people. We called up artists and went on studio visits, which now is such a huge luxury. We have 28 artists in the States in our program. We focus on abstract expressionism, minimalism, and color field painting. You'll see we have a bend to our gallery when you look and come see our shows. We deal with a lot of abstraction, is one of our things. We are not opposed to sculpture. We love sculpture, but we are a small gallery. So we continue to grow. I welcome you to come back to this gallery. Um, I'm so pleased to have NYU here, Jesse Bransford, Stephanie Tudor, everybody that's helped put this event together. We are friends with NYU. The tradition of art at NYU is very important. Eric Dever is a product of NYU. Um, I think it's really important to acknowledge those who have come through your universities. We all come from somewhere and our backgrounds are really important and you have done very well. Um, we met Eric when we went out to a studio in Watermill. And I have to say, for me, uh, owning this gallery and meeting artists like Eric, the connection that happens is what makes all this so important. Uh, we work in this huge art world that can be about money and satisfying certain people. But it's when we met and we had a connection ourselves and we connected with your artwork, and then we continue to grow together. It's a real team here. So, thank you everyone for coming. We're gonna have a great conversation with Jesse Bransford and Eric Dever. So, um, just by way of sort of follow-up, um, my name is Jesse Bransford, and I'm the chair of the Department of Art and Art Professions. Um, I've been the, uh, in the department for about 15 years. Um, I uh, did not work with Eric. Um, I, Eric graduated a little bit before my time. Um, but one of the great pleasures um, of having this leadership role is realizing that there are very, very deep roots in the department. Um, um, so deep that we're, uh, we can almost, uh, it's almost bottomless. Um, and when Stephanie reached out to me uh, towards the end of December um, and approached me with the idea of this, um, it was a real joy and a pleasure to be able to engage. Um, uh, Eric and I talked yesterday for quite some time and I think we can do a real deep dive. Um, we don't want to overwhelm um, you all, so uh, we're going to try to keep it uh, to about 20, 25 minutes. Um, but uh, uh, feel free to ask either, uh, um, obviously ask the artist questions, um, uh, and feel free to approach him. I'm putting you on the spot. He's very eminently approachable and very, very knowledgeable. Um, I would like to thank Christine and Marta um, for hosting us. This is a very, very generous um, gesture on your part. Um, I'd also like to congratulate them on um, a, a beautiful exhibition. Um, your, uh, your dedication to artists, I think, um, illustrates, um, uh, as an artist, it's always nice to hear dealers talking so lovingly about um, the artists that they work with. So thank you for hosting us. Um, Stephanie Tudor, like, thank you. Um, Stephanie is our uh, Director of Alumni Relations. And she has really been instrumental in a lot of ways of helping um, the NYU Steinhardt Art Department reconnect um, with its illustrious alums. And then finally, I want to thank Eric, um, first of all, for making such beautiful work and such an amazing show, uh, and for uh, inviting me for what I think is going to be a really nice conversation. Um, it's a funny thing to start here because I'm going to start with things that are not in front of us. But um, I could not help but notice um, in researching Eric's work that the work prior to this exhibition was predominantly uh, rooted in uh, three colors, uh, red, black, and white. Um, the, the blueprint of your, of your is present in those previous works, but this is such an explosion uh, of, of chroma. Um, as someone that teaches color theory, that's my primary area of expertise, 
Um, this is really what's uh, the most arresting to me about this, this work here. I just, want, just thought that would be a good starting point. Could you talk about your, uh, your journey through color as a poet? Oh, th thank you, Jesse. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to also mention that uh, I attended the uh, graduate program, where I graduated rather, 31 years ago, um, the art department at NYU Steinhardt. And it seems almost as though it was yesterday, but in fact, it um, was very slow a number of years afterwards. Um, but uh, I will say that, that my time there, it remains one of the most exciting periods of my life. Um, I'd also like to say that tonight commemorates something very important for me. It's this, it's this exhibition itself, and, and working with Christine and Martha. Um, this is clearly the, the high point of my profession to date, and I'm grateful for your confidence and your vision in working with me. Um, and, and that goes back to now to some of the, the years that came before um, that seemed rather um, slow. Um, but I worked for with White for four years. Not so much as a, a color, but I was concerned about really the, the medium itself, uh, paint. And, and paint, paint is a material. Exactly. Right. And the, 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 the two whites were zinc and titanium white, and most manufactured whites are, are made from these two colors, uh, these two whites. And, and, but really I was concerned uh, about experiencing the paint just as paint. And so I, I found uh, some viscosity working with this, uh, layers of transparency and some opacity, and, and also an appreciation for the surfaces I was working with as well, canvas, linen, and sometimes burlap. And so that's sort of invisible, but it's very much a, a part of this work. And then it was four years after um, I commenced white, about 2010, that I began work, when I added black to the mix. And it was suddenly then, after working through a variety of gray scales and graded circles, which were finished works, but, but it became clear to me that something happened. I was working then no longer with the material of paint as a material, or the methods and materials of painting, but I was working, it, it felt as though I was working with light itself. And at that point, the work seemed to, to move, it widened it, it, it seemed to move forward, advance. And, and I was fortunate to have an exhibition um, at Paris Concrete. And after I came back from France, I, I added red to, to the work. And, and I began grading the red with the titanium white and the, um, the ivory black, which uh, had a bluish cast, and so I was able to try to pull out some hues which one would not normally associate with the red palette. When you recognize those colors starting to emerge out of colors that we don't associate, um, did it activate a desire for those? It did, it did, it did. And, and I became aware that this limited palette was something that, that I was um, going to have to address at some point. But while I was working with them, it, it, it felt as though, well, it also corresponded somewhat to my yoga practice and this idea of, of uh, the, these, this principle called the gunas that correspond to color, but to these the qualities of light, energy, and matter. And so we could see that white would be lightness, and, and uh, red would be energy, and black would be um, a matter of gravity. And, and just as discovering personally for myself, light, um, suddenly the painting opened up in another direction where I actually felt as though I was not working so much with color at that point, but, but over time I was working more with light, energy, and matter itself. I, I almost felt as though I could put my hands into the thing and move it around and come up with something. And, and within certain philosophies that, um, or, or related to Hinduism, um, that is indeed what the origin of nature comes from. And, 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 and I was fortunate to have an exhibit at New York University Kimmel Galleries in 2015 that displayed the full range of the work from white to, to gray, black, to gradient into red. 
and, uh, and, and Barry Campbell Gallery as well about that time um, had ex exhibited my work in the, my first show in the gallery. And um, it was a nice selection of, of work. And two pieces subsequently went to, to Hong Kong in the Hong Kong Macau Embassy as part of the Art and Embassy program, and which are still there for one more year. One of our alums is uh, going to be representing uh, Macau in the next Miss Biennale. Oh, wow. So there's, a, there's an interesting <laughs> yeah. alumni connection. Um, I, I want to come back to this idea that um, I'm fascinated by um, artists and uh, our, our need to have a, a relationship to embodiment. And I think that the tradition of abstraction out of which your work comes um, pivots so importantly on this notion of material um, becoming um, image without being a picture. Um, and we talked a little bit about this, and I think uh, maybe that would be a way, uh, this idea of like touching the energy. Um, to me, something that resonated in um, one of the pieces of literature about your work was this idea of, of, of nature, of, um, of the natural order. And I think one of the things to me that's so um, seductive about this work is that it, it makes calls to um, the feelings that I get when I'm in a natural border without um, explicit pictoriality. Um, can you talk a little bit I about I certainly that? can, and this, this is a good place to start because maybe some of us from recognize the uh, palette perhaps, um, but it is, it's, it relates to a lavender field in East Marion, the North Fork of Long Island. But I, I wasn't so interested in depicting a place, but my, my feeling was, was somehow the, the place, I, I was overwhelmed, of course, by, as anyone would be, by a sense of fragrance. But also, the movement of the, of the it's seaside, coastal, um, um, but the, the movement of the uh, plants in, in, in different states, some were barren, some, some were in full blossom. Um, but, but I tried to, I was more interested in the experience of being there, that, that was very clear to me, um, than, than, than rendering it. And also it, it emotionally, it, it, the place is of significance personally, as it is, as place can be for, for all of us, and this place in particular. Well, and lavender is, a, a lavender field is a very interesting thing to think about, because again, if we're, we're talking about a, a relationship to, but a distance from place and pictoriality, lavender also has a very strong smell association. That's right. That, that's, that's true. Um, <clears throat> I, I think because color is, for me, I, I had spent 10 years with, with such a redacted palette, this is still a relatively new experience, although I did paint with color you know, before, and, and I, I have taught about color. Um, I think by not working with color, it left me um, in, with a heightened sense of experience, perhaps, when it came time to painting with color again. And, and, and just as the sense of light, energy, and matter, um, I tried to leave myself open to, to uh, cultivating Kind of a, a sort of a, a synesthesia with with color, but one that would be personal and occurs naturally. I should probably we should probably get a definition of synesthesia just so we got everybody on the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it sometimes it often happens with people who are working with numbers. They may they may experience a taste or hear a sound. Um, I happen to believe that we can all cultivate these sensitivities to subtle. You know, an experience, environment, and energy. Um, it's, it's just something that we have to, to um, become open to and quiet down, but cultivate and, and, and work towards. And I'm not sure where this journey is going to lead, but, but, to, but at the beginning, at this point now, um, speaking to, to the fragrance, uh, it could be learned, this, it could be learned, but uh, uh, this fragrance of lavender it personally resonates with, with, with these colors, but also green as well. There's something astringent to it. Um, but and again, but I, it, it, it was just something complementary to, to the painting and something to consider. The, the, uh, I think that's what I can say. Well, if you don't mind me sort of elaborating a little bit on that. So the, the, the notion of synesthesia is the, the idea that the color has a smell. 
or that a, a smell has a, a, a word association. And there, there are people that have very, very strong sort of uh, reactions to these cross-faded um, sensory inputs. And one of the things that I feel like your work in the tradition of abstraction, I can, I can, I can almost smell the texture of that. Um, and then to think of it, even if, even, if, uh, even if I don't look at the title, the color reminds me so strongly of lavender that that texture then sort of transports me. And again, this is not a pictorial experience. This is not like looking at a picture and being reminded of a place. This is like looking at the color and the texture and re remembering a smell. And I feel like that's such a rich um, experience that, that only abstraction really delivers. Um, so I yeah. Fully agree. Let's maybe talk about some other works in the, sure. in the show. Um, I, the, the notion of contrast, I think, mm -hmm. is also really important in the show. Um, the contrast creating these like very, very vibrant sort of like figure ground relationships. Could you maybe talk a little bit specifically about sure. this? Um, <clears throat> well, well, actually, the, the, the origin of this painting has something to do with um, another painting around the corner, but it, it, it was, the, the title of the other painting is Mama Shiraji, which is a, which is a festival that venerates and celebrates the um, Indian god Shiva, who's, who happens to be um, the destroyer god. But, but Shiva is often pictured, depicted with, with in, a, in this ca ink cast color. And, and I, was, I was interested in that. And at the, at the same time, I found it impossible to, to readily achieve. And, and the, the painting, um, uh, I lost control of the painting, frankly. And, and it, it, became, it became something immediate. And I made very immediate decisions uh, to, to um, hold it, frankly. Could you talk a little bit about, like, when, when you say, I, I, I know from my experience of, of making paintings what, what the loss of control, it's a very, very real, uh, it's, it's almost a trauma. Could, could you elaborate um, on well, that? Well, I, I think this part of the painting, I, you know, I, I turn the work as I work, and, and there are certain areas that, that uh, don't receive paint, and I, I just don't, I, I, I like to see some, some Canvas. It, to me, it's about the canvas breathes, but it's another. It's part of a, a death. But but what happened is the painting suddenly. Oh, sorry. Pardon me. But the painting suddenly. Um, it it was it was. I was working on it horizontally, but but it suddenly began to grow vertically and very quickly this way, and and I had to think about it and. And it wasn't what I intended to do, but I but I understood that that it was it wasn't painting itself, but but it, it became clear that this is this is where it would, how I would it would handle it, and um, and so I made some decisive moves with um, a block of color here and another stronger version of orange here, um, but then there are some some other areas. In the center, that that seemed to uh, allow me to just enter through the layers, and so so two things for me that that I found um, exciting what was the uh, vertical thrust of the painting, but also with the movement up, but also really the movement, the the, the direction into the canvas and into, into this area that I really, I, I didn't know what it was. Um, I, I wasn't, but I thought it was important to stop, and so I did, and, and uh, um, Would it be, I mean, it, it, is it a fair uh, characterization to say that when, when you're, you're almost personifying the, the, the painting, or not personifying, but you're, the urge, and, and you notice that the audience notices the urge is to talk to the painting, right? Um, the, the, can you talk about like the uh, you mentioned these energies with regards to the, the pre-chromatic work? Um, had, I assume that the energies changed and became either more complicated or more clear um, once all of this burst of color sort of came back onto the field. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I, I certainly can. Um, uh, for me much of the work 
in, in this room, I felt as though um, I found a, uh, uh, a new pathway to, to uh, and this might not be so related to color, but color was my means of interpreting um, some emotional states, as well as a pathway to uh, a new sort of painting. And it wasn't something I planned on, and it was just something that happened. And I, just, I was concerned about it being a big departure, but I also understood that there was an urgency and that I needed to do this. Um, uh, as far as the, the color goes, the palette, um, which is our spectrum, should we talk about this now? Yeah, yeah, let's go. The, uh, the, the spectrum, as we understand, that, that we experience um, in a rainbow, in a prism, the spectrum that, that um, Isaac Newton identified and wrote about color frequencies and is the thing that as kids we understand when we have a, a, a prism where we're learning about color. I, I thought that it also has another correspondence to, to, a, to an Ayurvedic principle that's, that many people who practice yoga are aware of, but um, called the chakras. And the chakras, for, as it just so happens, um, correspond practically ident identically with, with the color spectrum that we see experience in the rainbow. So, so one spectrum is something we see in nature, and the other is one, the chakras, which are considered to be energy points in the body where, where consciousness and energy meet, but they are located in, in regions beginning from, from our abdomen all the way up to our head. Um, there is this, this added uh, complexity and, and this is something I was trying to navigate as well, just as we spoke about light, energy, and matter. This became um, uh, the reason why, part of the reason, that, that I thought to consider color, the color spectrum as a unit, uh, just because of the, the uh, I thought that, that there was a way that I could maybe experience more personally and deeply with my own body as well, a sense of what of the, the color spectrum of the chakras, of course, my chakras meant. Um, so it gave me a, a, an internal feeling. As we spoke about synesthesia, I don't, this is something that, that I, I haven't worked out. It's something that, that I'm investigating and, and I'm trying to be open to. And, and uh, it takes years for you know, people to understand something about it. But, um, but that's where we begin in, in, in subtle, understanding of the place where we, we inhabit Earth? Well, for me, it, uh, it, it gives us an expanded notion. When I use the word nature, um, and, and this is something that I, I have a, a, when I talk to the students, um, they always want picture. And when you say nature, they think picture of nature, or a picture of tree. And the kind of nature, and I think you've talked about it very eloquently, the kind of nature that I think this work is getting at is both an, uh, uh, has a potential exteriorization, but is also fundamentally interior. It it it, it comes from the interior place. That is part of my my process as well. Um, I in this painting, the, the lavender um, reference was was the beginning, and and uh, but it's not something I come to immediately. It's something I think about. And sometimes the painting changes as well as, as, as this one did, and it becomes something altogether, altogether different. Um, this is a question that I didn't ask you yesterday, so I don't want to catch you off guard with it, but um, uh, having worked with a redacted palette for so long, uh, and then having this explosion, I can't help but wonder, are there colors that were redacted from this palette that um, are, I mean? No. The, the, uh, it, no, in some some paintings, for instance, were missing uh, red and orange. But, but I, yeah, the, the paint that I'm working with is is really only seven or eight colors, and they, they correspond pretty identically to the, to the uh, color to the uh, spectrum. So red, orange, yellow. I use two yellows. Um, um, green, one green, one blue, and a purple, and I mix everything from those. I've selected. Um, versions of purple, blue, and green that give me uh, a variety of, give me the, the most maximum opportunity.
opportunity to, to create a new view. But, but, but I try to be true to, to the, uh, instead of purchasing a, a lot of pain, I wanted to come to this personally and to understand what was happening. And I wanted to find every green that I could, that I needed. And uh, I think that's happy. It always blows students' minds when they realize, and, um, and if, if, if you're not a practitioner and just a, an appreciator, um, th this is such a magical thing that the notion that you can take essentially six tubes of paint and generate millions, and I mean literally millions of colors, um, there's something really like, uh, I mean, we've been sort of treading around metaphysics, but there's something like sort of just transcendent about that reality. And I think the work um, really sort of carries that, and the, the exuberance of the palette um, really sort of performs this. Um, Without getting, without getting too schmaltzy about it, this, uh, this almost devotional sort of relationship to uh, the practice of painting and the practice um, of just being in the world. And I feel like, I feel that when I look at the work, and that's, that's very satisfying. Thank you. Um, that was actually, that was 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there, were, if there were other things that you um, were explicit. I mean, there, I think we covered most of our basics. For sure. I think so. The only, only thing I could say is that, that the paintings are, are titled loosely after, uh, for the most part, after dates. Sometimes there's more information included. The dates at first uh, um, refer to the date that the painting was commenced. Often that date reflected some seasonality. For instance, in this painting over here, reflected the uh, time when when the first uh, plant, flower or plants were blossoming in the in the winter or spring, and these were. Um, hellebores there. The, the color was, was pretty intense. Um, I didn't, you know, render those, but, but to me it, was, it, it indicated, it, the, the, the titles um, indicated something about our solar calendar. Sometimes the date reflected when the, when the painting was finished, and other times there, there, there's a mention of place. I think that's important sometimes. Um, if it had, it, usually it had to have personal significance to, to mention place. And, and what else? Uh, sometimes uh, a reference to music, and I would say the uh, music that I was listening to resonated with the sort of feeling I had at the time about um, what I was working on, or, or uh, um, there was something complimentary about it. So from time to time, there's a, a, a title to integrate it. So again, in the interest of sort of giving us time to sort of like mingle and actually look at the work, I think this is, this, this is you. probably perfect time to sort of take it. Thank you so much for the insight. Thank you for sharing your time. Thank, Thank you for the work. specific vision at the beginning or do you sketch out your paintings or I know that you know for artists we all as we're working on something it changes and evolves over time and there are happy mistakes and whatnot but do you just dive into it or do you know what you want it to look like before like how did you know it lost control I don't you I, I don't usually know what it is uh, what the final form will be um, and so uh, but there seemed to be an urgency in, in this work, uh, this, this um, painting in particular, and I just let it happen. Um, I could probably quote Gerhard Richter and say that some of these paintings know more than I do. Huh. There's that personification <laughs> that was in that point. I hope that helps. <laughs> Probably time for maybe one more question, if there is one. Uh, on the other side of this wall, you have uh, two paintings that are side by side. Why are, why are those together? Well, that's, that is a sort of an unexpected diptych. And I was um, imprinting, and as I do in much, most of these paintings, I was pressing um, paper in, in plastic into the work with paint on it. 
and, and I was working on two simultaneously. And so what I would do to this canvas, I would do the same, but I would, but, but uh, the first pass would be more saturated, the second pass would, would be less, and then I would do another one on this one, which was more saturated, and less one here. And so, so they, they, they somewhat mirror each other, but I do rotate the work, and I found that there was an interesting, it was appealing to me how the two paintings fit together, um, and, and how what wasn't painted, uh, or the thin and the lean areas in the painting, something like this, they, they seem to create a shape, and I thought that, that, that it, it locked the painting together well. And so that, that's, that's an instance of, I, I don't really care to necessarily start out to work with the diptych, but I do believe that um, it's my prerogative if I want to add another canvas to a painting, if I think it will benefit from another one, or I just feel often it's something I just want to see, or, or for myself, I'll do it, and I will add sometimes three. They can be une un un unequal widths, but that's just uh, that's one of the things you can do with painting and drawing. You can add on if you like. It, this notion, and for me, it really, and I, I noticed it too, and I, I was, I'm glad you asked that question. It, for me, it really opens up the reality of, of just like when you're in your studio working, there's an infinity before you. And um, you know that loss of I, for me the, the loss of control is is that very often is that conf confrontation with the I could do anything I can do anything and uh, again I feel like um, in the history of your work this show sort of really explodes with that sense of possibility. Um, as, as, yeah, as, thank you for that question. Um, so I, I really do think we should stop here and everybody should have another glass of wine and we should you know, take in the work um, with the new insight that he's given us. I just want to thank everybody for braving the weather. Um, we, this is a really great turnout and um, we're really, really happy to see you and um, thank you for joining us this evening. So um, uh, be careful getting home, stay warm, and uh, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.